Of course, if we can conduct a hypothesis test, that means we can also construct a confidence interval, which is the other type of inference that we do. So we want to construct a confidence interval for the difference of two means for independent samples, of course, which would be a 2 samp t int on the calculator. Now on StatCrunch, you go the same place you went before. So this is the calculator. But on StatCrunch, you go to the same place every time, which is nice for that particular type of problem, that is. So you go to stat, you go to tstat, and then you pick two sample. Now, whether you choose with summary or with data depends on the problem from there, but that's where you're heading towards. And notice we have a point estimate, which is the center of our interval. That's right here. Actually, let me highlight that. So your point estimate is right there, which is right here. So that's the center of your interval. That's your point estimate. And then you add and subtract away your margin of error. And your margin of error is right here. And you'll notice when we saw this, um, the degrees of freedom is very complicated. You remember that degrees of freedom we just saw in that previous example, and it was decimals, and it was a mess. It's actually a really ugly formula. You're welcome to look it up in the textbook, but it's atrocious. It has multiple fractions inside of fractions. So we just tend to use the smaller of n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1 if we're doing this by hand. Now, if those requirements look familiar, that's because they should, <laughs> right? These are the same requirements that we had before, right, that we had for running that hypothesis test. And if you didn't get it, well, we're going to do it again right here. So researchers suspect that drinking tea might enhance the production of interferon gamma, a molecule that helps the immune system fight bacteria, viruses, and tumors. A study involved 21 healthy people who did not normally drink tea or coffee. 11 of the participants were randomly assigned to drink 5 or 6 cups of tea a day, while 10 of them were asked to drink the same amount of coffee. After two weeks, blood samples were exposed to an antigen product of interferon gamma, and, excuse me, and production of interferon gamma was measured. The results are shown in the table. And yes, this really happened. They really made people drink tea, this much tea and this much coffee. All right, so we're going to verify requirements. And these graphs are going to be part of that, but they're not the beginning part. So part one down here, I'm just going to write random. And it was given. I mean, it says that they're randomly assigned and such. So we'll just assume. <laughs> it's either given or it's safe to assume. We, we don't do anything in this class that's not random. So, All right, so that's yes. Step two, um, actually, let me do step two over here. Um, we need the samples to be independent of each other. And this is yes. Um, this is two separate groups that they measured once. They measured at the end to find out their production of this interferon gamma, or excuse me, interferon gamma. Two separate groups measured once. So that's done. All right, now step three. This is kind of the hardest step as usual. So you need um, samples independent of the population. All right, well, that's no problem because you need N1, which I'll call this one group one right here. So that's group one. So I need N1 to be less than 0.05 of capital N1. And I need N2, which is right here, I'll make that group two. So N2 to be less than or equal to 0.05 of capital N2. Well, we had 12, or no, I had 11 people here. So 11 people is less than 0.05. Now it's a little bit unclear what they want the population to be. It's probably all healthy people because they say they're taking all these healthy people. So you could say all the healthy people that drink tea if you wanted to, or you could just say all healthy people. It's kind of okay either way in this, in this particular case. So I'll just say all healthy tea drinkers. <laughs> I'll, I'll break it down into little groups. So there's the all healthy tea drinkers, which is an of course moment. And then similarly, 10 is less than 0.05 of all healthy coffee drinkers. So both of these are kind of like, well, yeah, sure, right? So we'll just say, duh, of course. 
right? There's way more of that many tea drinkers or coffee drinkers in the world. So we're fine there. And step four is what the graphs are for. Um, step four is the normal piece. Now, normally you'd be in trouble um, because your sample sizes are small. 11 and 10 is not very large. But it's okay because each of these graphs show that the distribution is normal because the dots are within those boundaries. So the points are in line, right, or more or less. So both samples come from um, normal. I'll just say both samples are normal with no outliers. Let's put it that way. That's what they say in the box up above. Both samples are normal with no outliers. And you can see that from the graphs. You have to write why, because both graphs or in both graphs, I should say, because in both graphs, the dots are linear. Ish, right? They kind of follow along the linear path. Um, they're definitely between the boundaries and that's the most important part. This guy right here is the closest, but he's still within that boundary. So we're okay. All right, so we verified our requirements, that's good. This is all looking hopefully very familiar because we've done this a million times by now. It's just now we have to do it for both groups. Okay, so now let's construct that confidence interval. And I just wanna give the result. I'm not asking for the formula or anything like that, probably because the formula is so awful. So we're just going to get this out of the calculator or stat crunch. All right, so let's start with the calculator just because I feel like it. Now you'll notice I put the values in for L1 and L2. These are two separate groups. And you'll notice they don't match in size. That's okay. That's because they're independent of each other. So they don't have to match in size. So I'm gonna to go to stat, tests, and I'm looking for two SAMP T int, which is right there at number zero. <laughs> so two SAMP T int, there it is. That's the one. It said so on the previous page. It said so right here, two SAMP T int. So that's where we're going. And we grab that. And then we actually have data this time. We have a row of data for T and a row of data for coffee. I put T in L1, I put coffee in L2, leave the frequencies at one. That's literally just saying each one of the items in your column occurs once, which is the way we always do this. Now, well, I want a 0.95, so that's good, right? It says 0.95 right there, 95%. So we're good. And just like with the test, we always do pooled no, always. And click calculate. And there we have it. Negative point one nine seven four and thirty four point four three four. All right, so a couple of things. One, we might want to make a note right here for both of these pooled is no, unchecked, if you're in StatCrunch. We're not gonna check the box for pooled. Pooled is a whole other thing. We actually have to run the test that's from 11.4, which uses a completely different distribution called the F distribution, which we haven't even learned, so we're not gonna do that. All right, so we've got that. Simple as that. All right, so let's go check it in StatCrunch and make sure StatCrunch gets the same answer and also learn how to do it in StatCrunch. So you can see I have the tea here, I have the coffee right next to it, two different columns. It's totally okay that they're not the same amount because they're not dependent. I'm not gonna find the differences here. These are two separate groups. So I go to stat, T stat, two sample, just like I wrote on the previous page. And then you have to choose, do you have a da data or do you have a summary? So with data is what we have because we have two columns of data. Summary is when I give you the X bars and the S's and stuff like that in the problem. So you're gonna click with data. And then it's gonna say, where's your sample one? Well, my sample one is tea. My sample two is coffee. I'm not going to check that pooled. We're just gonna leave it unpooled going to go to confidence interval right there and 0.95 is perfect and if I'm interested I can get all sorts of things like a confidence interval plot summary statistic I can even get a QQ plot if I wanted to um, if, I, if I'm interested there's a bunch of stuff in here that you can do right but you don't have to do any of those those are all just optional they're just in case you want to 
All right, so click Compute, and there's the confidence interval right there, negative 0.197 to 34.434, just like the calculator gave us. There's the confidence interval picture, which we're about to draw actually in another problem. And there's, um, this is actually a different kind of thing. That's the, the plot for the tea and the plot for coffee. Those are the same graphs that we were looking at, but kind of tilted. So around the diagonal line. So they're not exactly the same, but they're getting us the same idea. All right, so again, those were not necessary to draw. They're just kind of for fun, but we do need that value right there. And if you were interested, by the way, there's the sample mean. I clicked sample statistics, so it gave me the sample mean and standard deviation for each of my groups, which is nice. 